um, and this drowning in a French town, yeah. loin sur mer Absolutely shocking. So 60 people on a boat and 12 died on this voyage, including um, around 10 women, and half of the people dead were actually under the age of, I think, 18. So it was really, really shocking. And it was traumatic for these three fishermen who were just going about, you know, their lobster catching and had to pull out three bodies from the water. And I think reading this story was just especially shocking because, you know, we hear our politicians in this country talking time and time again time and time again about how they're going to stop the boats and their plans, but actually nothing has been done. And this is so serious an issue where people are, are literally being killed daily by these, by these channel crossings. But they shouldn't get and, on the boats. I mean, you know, yeah. A, they shouldn't get on the boats. No, I mean, I remember yeah. saying that and literally people lynched me. How could you say it's, that? Yeah. As if I'm being cruel, suggesting that don't get on a goddamn yeah. boat that is dangerous and you know these yeah. people who you're buying this thing off don't care yeah. about your well-being. This is a massive humanitarian crisis and I think obviously the French government here are not doing their part and yeah. that's been clear no. and they've always been happy to just shift the blame onto us and police these boats across the ferry or obviously sometimes not. Um, but our government too has responsibility and you know with this Labour government his plan is to simply give asylum and, and it's that kind of behaviour which mm. leads to these people who are you know told Told by the traffickers, come to Britain, you will be getting a house and free work and you don't have to worry about your papers. And, you know, to a certain extent, that is true in the sense that you can come here and just and have asylum. There, there is nothing being done against that. Um, well, there is. I mean, there's still processes to, to yeah, go Yeah, sure, but, but on the whole, Labour do not have a strong plan to actually stopping the root of the issue, which is the fact that we are not strong enough to police, or well, we're not policing our borders strongly enough, even though there is an appetite but, for it. But, but, well, look, it's clear that uh, boats can sort of, in a sense, be turned back, because Germany uh, sent some people back. So, I'm... Winston, what do you, do you make of this? I was actually looking at stuff the other day about this, and the thing is, they're saying, uh, like, the, the, the French attitude now to the British is turning mm -hmm. because they are so angry and upset, you know, about having to deal with the, the migrants on that side of it. So, but, in what way is it but turning? In, but, well, in saying that, because they're saying that because of what Alice just said a minute ago, the lure of coming to this country is so great, the mm -hmm. demand is never easing, the demand's increasing. Yeah. People want, no matter what they're putting in place, they said the French coastline has become more militarised. Um, so, what they're doing now, they're finding newer ways to get in. So, they're starting their crossings in canals and further inland or they're going further up the coastline. And even though they're using drones and more sophisticated ways of and night vision goggles to try and detect it, they still won't stop that demand. Because, like you said, once you get here, you've got that opportunity to, for, for a new life. And most people who come here stay. Look, if it was me, I'd have cruise ships there in the channel. Anybody who comes gets on the ship, we process you there. And that would put people off straight away. Exactly. The only yeah, thing is, not. is that, <coughs> the, they said, the people that are coming, right, you say about risking their lives. Mm. Yeah. If I'm willing to risk my life mm. and my children's life, I saw, saw a woman, a pregnant woman with her children mm. die this week. If she's willing to put her unborn child and children with her at risk, what does it say about her drive to want to go from wherever she is to get here? She must have such a desire no. for something. I, I think well. she thinks she's unlikely. What happened to them is unlikely mm. to happen to her because the odds are that it won't. Mm. Just like when you get on a plane and you think, oh, well, uh, some of them crash, but, but hopefully not the one I'm in sort of thing. I, I bet think. the percentage of people on these boats is far higher than, than the percentage of people it's dying. It's well, mostly we've, women, isn't it? We've, we've French Interior Minister Gérard Damanin says Britain's soft touch migrant rules is to blame for the latest small boats crisis. Now, this comes after 12 migrants have died trying to cross the UK, uh, to the UK, including a pregnant woman and six children. So does the UK have a soft touch on migrants crossing the Channel? Let's talk to former UKIP leader Neil Hamilton and former Conservative MP Neil Parrish. Good to see you both this morning. Neil Hamilton, we're going to have to keep it very formal with two Neils on this morning. Neil Hamilton, what do you make of this? Are we a soft touch? Of course we are. Uh, that's the pull factor, isn't it? I'd say I wouldn't want to let the French off the hook either because they can easily stop these boats leaving the shores uh, in Calais or wherever. Uh, so uh, we see the French police and the border force of France standing by on the beach whilst the uh, people smugglers carry on onto the uh, dinghies and then send across the channel. But they're absolutely right to say that we are a soft touch because... All these um, illegal immigrants know that they'll be put in the hotels, they'll be fed and watered, they'll get free mobile phones, they qualify for benefits, 
and they know nobody ever gets deported. So here to stay. So of course it's a big pull factor. And we've had a useless government for the last uh, thirteen years, and we need more useless government now. So we go into this until we have a government that's got the will to put a stop to it once and for all, get out of the European Court of Human Rights, which is the big legal block for the success of schemes like Rwanda. And uh, we've got to take charge of our own borders again, which is what people voted for in the referendum back in 2016. Oh, Neil Paris, do you think that getting out of the uh, Convention of Human Rights and all the things that uh, uh, Neil Hamilton is saying are really the answer? Even if we left that, there are countries who are still within it who manage to um, ignore certain elements of it. Is that really the answer? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Nana. I think it's too simplistic to say it's just all our fault. Um, I think uh, um, we cannot deport to many countries, which we need to. Um, I think we are letting the French entirely off the hook. Um, we actually need to be able to get to have actually more access uh, to the French police, to the French security. Uh, we need to get our police and our security forces to help them, uh, along with Germany as well, where a lot of these boats are stored right through to Turkey. I think, you know, stop actually doing anything about them when they've got here um, is far too late. And so, therefore, I think let's not actually beat ourselves up over it. Let's actually get back to the French and say, let's do a lot more about this. Let's actually work much more together. Um, I do agree with Neil Hamilton um, that the police in France don't always appear to do what we would like them to do to stop the boats. But, of course, Falling out with the French over this one will not actually stop the migrants. And, and don't forget, these are people, um, they are children and women and everybody losing their lives. And so, you know, we do actually need to try and stop them. And these are people traffickers, basically, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and it's illegal what they're doing. Um, and we do need to stamp it out. So I think, yes, you know, Neil has a point that we are, we can appear to be soft, but that won't stop them coming, I don't think. They they are convinced they're going to get here um, and they pay a lot of money very often to get here and then they're drowned in the channel. It is horrendous. So I would say go back to the French and say, right, let's actually sort this out. Let's try and stop them actually getting into those boats because it'll be safer for them um, and safer for everyone in the long run. And we won't get as many migrants. And I think, Neil, it's always e easy to criticise whatever government in power until you're actually in power to do something about it. And so I, I think working much more with the Germans, the French and the Belgians um, to try and stop it. And, and whether, you know, Keir Starmer can actually negotiate any deal to get them back to Europe, because the danger of that is they, that Europe will want free movement of people. And I don't want to get Neil too wound up this morning. Uh, but, you know, that is the key to it. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, to be fair, Neil, Neil Hamilton, I mean, in terms of talking with France and Germany to try and sort something out, that's exactly what the Prime Minister has been doing. Mm. That's exactly what the previous government did and got absolutely nowhere. Uh, Macron, of course, uh, isn't interested in doing a deal because he's a fully paid up Europhile and says, no, it's Brussels we want to talk to, not Paris. Uh, by the way, the French have got a big problem with the migrants coming across from Italy and Italy won't come from France. You know, this is not something which is peculiar just to the English Channel. It, within the EU, you know, the so-called Dublin Convention, which says you can send uh, migrants back if they come to your country, is not the first place at, at which they landed after they left uh, wherever they are outside the EU. The Dublin Convention doesn't work. Uh, so it, it, the whole of Europe is actually suffering the same problem because right across Europe, the elites will not deal with this problem. Fundamentally, the elites are actually in favour of mass immigration. And this government under Starmer definitely is in favour of mass migration. Labour Party calculates this is where the votes of the future are going to come from for them. So, of course, they've got no interest whatsoever in controlling migration. The tragedy was that the last Conservative government, which had a real political interest in cracking down on illegal migration, failed to do so because of their obsession with the European Convention on Human Rights, which is an absolute legal block on the Rwanda scheme. Within the, the which set up the Rwanda scheme, there was first of all a right of appeal for every individual on grounds that his was an exceptional case. And if the Home Office then turned them down, they still had a right to a judicial review. Of course, if they can still go to the European okay. Court of Human Rights. So 
you know, until we deal with this, we're never going to be able to send people to third country. Now, now your mic is cutting in and out, so it's making it quite difficult oh, to, to, to hear. Uh, can we, 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 Neil Paris, we'll give you 20 seconds to just have a response because we've got to move on. I just thought it was a bit unfair because Neil talked a lot and you didn't get your, uh, your turn. Right, OK, I mean, just to say really back to Neil Hamilton, and I think we put far too many eggs in the one basket of Rwanda, um, and I could I still repeat, we have got to sort it out the other side of the channel, however difficult it is, and let's actually get to work on that, and then there'll be less people risking their lives coming across and less people being trafficked across the English Channel. OK, Neil Hamilton, Neil Parrish, good to see you both. Thanks very much Thank indeed. You.